G'day ladies and gents and welcome to War Thunder with Mags and welcome to War Thunder Sim Battles and as you can tell from the title of the video today we are going to talk about team killing. Now for those of you who have not been paying attention or just missed the patch notes, on the 26th of October, so just a couple of days ago, Gaijin released a new patch which turned off team killing and team damage inside of uh, simulation and realistic battles. This was a massive mistake on their behalf and uh, clearly they've actually understood it because it has been revoked. I never actually saw a release that it was being turned back on but this battle was driven right today, it was actually driven right before I made this video and I get team killed in this. When you see it happen don't give the guy a hard time, it was an honest mistake, I'll show that when it comes to it. But anyways, they turned off team killing. Now this is on the surface doesn't actually appear to be much of an issue, but it is actually a massive change in the way the games are played, particularly in simulation battles. A big part of how simulation battles work, and the gameplay behind them, is based around identifying the targets, recognising a friendly vehicle from a hostile vehicle, because obviously you do not have a marker that tells you that this is a friendly or a hostile vehicle. You need to visually identify the targets yourself before you fire at them. Now turning off team killing means that there is absolutely no reason to not just fire at everything that moves. If the shell does damage, obviously it was a hostile target. If the shell doesn't do damage, well, you just wasted a shell and no harm done. Now a massive part of simulation battles is target awareness, situational awareness, and general knowledge in order to be able to perform well. Turning off team damage simply eliminates all of these as a requirement and, well, it really does destroy the name simulation. I mean, people will debate endlessly on how much of a simulation simulation battles is in the first place, but uh, once you remove team damage, well, even World of Tanks has team damage. The enemy tank has been but anyways, as I said, I never saw a release on it that it was being reactivated, however, I get team killed in just a few moments in this battle, so obviously it has been rescinded, at least in simulation battles. I have no idea about realistic, I haven't had a chance to test yet. Now, you could jump up and down about how much of a mistake this was in the first place, you know, ask repetitively, you know, why did they do it, what were they thinking, you make a big show of it, and once in the past I would have done exactly the same thing, but I don't want to do that anymore. In fact, I actually want to tip the hat in Gaijin's direction. Clearly they're looking at team killing as it being an issue inside of War Thunder, specifically War Thunder ground battles. And clearly they actually want to do something about it, and they tried something. Now, I don't think it was a good idea, and clearly the most of the community didn't, from the general consensus that was uh, popping up all over the place about it, and obviously Gaijin did listen and they've removed it, otherwise I wouldn't have died in just a few moments. So, fair enough. But, there is a problem. So instead of focusing on what has been done and what was revoked, I want to throw out a couple of ideas that I've had for a fairly long time on what should be done about this why Gaijin actually has thoughts about trying to address it inside of their head. Now, as a content creator, I receive an abnormally large amount of team killing. A lot of people have assumed that my constant name changes are actually in relation to me trying to avoid games of Chase the YouTube with the enemy team, and that there's certainly an aspect of that in there, but the trigger for me to actually start changing my name as often as I do actually came from team kills. Now speaking of team kills, I'm about to get blown up in 3, 2, 1, and there we go. There's the team kill. Um, yeah, don't give Rainbow Unicorn 81 a hard time. He misidentified me as a tiger. It's fine, it was an honest mistake, I fully believe him. Don't give him a hard time, leave him alone for that. But yeah, as you can see, team kills are back on the table. So anyways, as I was saying, it was actually a series of ground forces match where I got team killed that resulted in me starting a rapid name change, because it was becoming very common. I think it was the fifth or sixth time it had happened in a single day and I rolled forward, I think I was playing, yeah I was playing a Russian team, I was in a T-34 and I think I had driven forward three or four meters and I promptly got bladdered in the back of the turret by a KV-2. That was it, I was out. Changed my name, instantly it stopped. So why do I bring that up? Well, sitting in a situation where I am regularly team killed, or at least I was at one period of time, means I've had a lot of time to think about potential mechanics that could be added to the game that would address the problem without affecting gameplay. Now, I'm going to give you an example of something that I've personally done here and describe the effect. First things first, if you check the video description down below, you'll find the link to one of my older videos. It's over a year old, where I publicly roasted a team killer. Now, in this particular team kill, it was 
Uh, it was hilarious. I honestly was trying so hard not to laugh while I was making the video because the whole situation was just ridiculous. The amount of incompetence on display was friggin' amazing. But it was more than that. At that point, I was being team killed about, you know, once a day. That was pretty much standard. It would happen that I'd lose one match a day to some moron just, you know, wanting to kill the YouTuber. After posting that video, and effectively humiliating this poor team killer, which may not have been the right thing to do, there is a reason why I don't do it anymore, but, you know, it may not have been the right thing, I don't say that I was a perfect angel for it, but after posting that video, for about two months, it just stopped. It completely stopped. So as much as naming and shaming might be a bit of a dick move, at the same time, it is very effective, because there are people out there that, ah, they love to be a bit of an arsehole and team kill people, and they find it all funny, up until the point that they're identified as a team killer by the greater population of the game. At that point, it's not so much fun anymore, because people know you're a dick before you do anything. And as a result of this, in particular combat situations where you may need a little bit of help, uh, some people may choose not to help you simply because they know you're a team killer. World of Warships deals with this in a very interesting way. If you team kill, you get marked in purple. Now that purple tag only lasts for a period of time, I'm not exactly sure on exactly how long it lasts for in that game, but it clearly identifies you at the start of a match as being a team killer, so everybody knows. There is no way for you to hide it and say that you didn't do nothing. You killed somebody on your own team. And this is a general rule this being identified pulls a lot of people into line in a real hurry. Not everyone, but I'll come to that in a moment, but pulls a lot of people into line. Some people are honestly embarrassed about being identified as a team killer, because it may have been just a genuine accident that caused this to happen. And in those situations, as a general rule, the players that made the mistake will go out of their way to not make that mistake again, because they do not want to be identified that way. And this is fine. This alone is a simple way of punishing somebody without affecting gameplay. Just mark them in the team list as being somebody who is a team killer, so you can see that they're a team killer. But of course, for some people, that's just not enough. They just don't care. They, they're proud of the fact that they're team killers. This is where you need to affect their ability to play the game, but not the rest of the teams. This is where things get a little bit more tricky, but I think I have a pretty good idea on this. Now, already when you team kill somebody, you receive a fine. Now, this fine is usually somewhere in the vicinity of the repair cost of the vehicle that you destroyed. This in itself is perfectly fine, but the repair cost of vehicles to some players is nothing. It really doesn't matter. I can't remember the last time that I put vehicle repair costs into consideration whenever I did anything within the game. So, obviously, a team killer that is fairly cashed up, has a lot of silver lines, some good grinding aircraft, is not going to be in any way concerned by this either. So, how do you solve that problem? Well, you don't want to ban them straight away. You want them to learn a lesson and potentially do harm to themselves by continuing to ruin, ruin other people's matches. Just banning them will just encourage bullshit. So instead, your first team kill, your name goes purple and you have to pay the repair costs of the vehicle that you destroyed. I would like to see in this situation that the t vehicle that was team killed does not have to pay his own repair. His vehicle is automatically repaired at the cost of the team killer. Seems only fair, the person who got team killed loses a match, the person who team killed is now marked in purple for say 24 hours and has had to pay the repair for the vehicle that he has killed. However, what about repetitive team killers? Because obviously that's not enough to deter some people. Well, at this point you want to start adding multipliers. So, let's say for example the vehicle being team killed is 10,000 credits. If the team killer, once he goes purple, proceeds to team kill another vehicle, well, how about we put a 5 times multiplier on that? So the next time the fine will be 5 times the value of the tank that he's just killed. So his second team kill is now 50,000 credits. Well, there you go, he's done any potential profit that he'll make in this match outside of having an incredible match. And even then, he's not gonna make much out of it. So you're now punishing his ability to play the game. So what about the third time? Well, the third time he team kills, you want a three times multiplier on the five times multiplier. So 50,000 becomes 150,000 credits for your third team kill. Your fourth team kill, a two times multiplier. Now the cost of the team killer getting his lull on by shooting somebody in the cap circle just became 300,000 credits. And at that point, if the team killer has still not learnt that team killing is a stupid thing to do, 
The fifth team kill will result in a one week ban and upon returning to the game, one week with your name in purple where your first team kill will automatically result in a five times multiplier and the process starts again. Even the best players in the game would only be able to maintain that level of douchebaggery for a certain period of time before they simply ran out of silver lines to continue doing this within the matches. Now Gaijin does like their automation, so a mechanic like this could be completely automated, it will require no oversight. All it is is if somebody keeps messing up, the fines get bigger, and the fines only affect the person who is acting like a bit of a dick. With the people being team killed, well they lose a match, but they don't even have to pay a repair cost for their vehicle. It's completely covered by the team killer, so he doesn't even have the pleasure of costing them the value of their tank. He's picking up the tab on that one as well. And the fact that he's picking up the cost of the vehicle also prevents this from becoming an exploit. You won't get team members killing team members' tanks because they won't want to pick up the extra repair bill and they won't want to get marked in purple because of the cost that is associated with a second team kill should it happen, even by accident. Now the last part of all of this that I was toying with is the potential for team killers, those that have been marked in purple, not actually having a penalty associated with them. So if somebody on the team killer's team shoots them and destroys their tank, they will not receive a purple name and they will not receive a fine. I'm actually against this. See, here's the thing. Blue on blue does happen and it's not always a deliberate thing. Sometimes it is just a genuine accident, like what you saw at the start of this video. Now, should this mechanic that I'm talking about be in place, for that team kill, that, that player would have wound up with a purple name. Now that was just a genuine accident, I do truly believe that. So, the embarrassment of being flagged as a team killer, even on just a mistake, would probably encourage him to, in future, double check his targets and make sure he's not going to do blue on blue again. At the very least, for the period of time that his name is purple, he'd be going out of his way as somebody who accidentally wound up being flagged as a team killer to avoid having it happen twice. However, if you remove all penalties associated with killing somebody from a team killer, well, you know there will be players that will check the team stats as soon as they log into a match looking for any team killers on their team and then will go out of their way to execute them. Regardless of whether or not these guys are genuine team killers that are going out of their way to ruin people's matches or whether or not it was just a new sim player who made an honest mistake. And I honestly think a financial penalty to the team killer if they continue to team kill should be more than enough. They don't need to be punished by being an open target for everybody at exactly the same time. In fact, that doesn't really do much to stop them wanting to team kill anymore. If anything, it's going to encourage the circle to continue. So that would be my suggestion. And this is a series of mechanics that would primarily only affect the person who does the team kill without affecting the gameplay or anybody else that's involved in the matches. The best part about this series of mechanics is it could be applied to arcade realistic and sim. It could be applied to both ground forces and air forces. There's no limitation on what it could be applied to and it would work across the board. It would become unfinancially viable to do large scale team killing as you see some players doing and a hell of a lot more effective than the current system. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching. Please leave a comment in the comment section down below and tell me what you think of this idea, or if you have any alterations on this idea that you think would improve it, or if you have any ideas on your own on exactly how this should be done. The key thing I'm thinking about here more than anything else is a way of punishing those who do wrong without affecting the gameplay of everybody else, because the second option is just not acceptable. Anyways, click like if you do, subscribe if you want to see more, drive smart, drive safe, and I'll catch you on the battlefield.